Thank you so much. Um, uh, hi, everybody, and thank you for joining this session. It sounds like it's one of the last ones for the day. So I appreciate your, your presence uh, and your attention. Um, I am Maria Cruz. I'm a program manager in the Google Open Source Program Office. I added my Twitter handle here on the slides in case you want to tweet about this. And uh, yeah, so we can go ahead and get started. I'm going to be talking about how to um, design a communication strategy for open source projects or how to get engineers to think about communication channels. So I wanted to start with uh, a quote uh, from a book that I'm reading. Uh, and I'm sorry because the title is not quite right. I am missing one part. It's called uh, Working in Public uh, by Nadia Eiffel. Um, and she states that uh, social platforms have really changed the way we make and consume content and creators now reach a much bigger potential audience, but these uh, relationships are pleading one sided and often overwhelming. And I thought that it was um, a good reference to, to what I'm going to be diving into. I, um, from my experience working in open source, uh, open source projects tend to develop and create a lot of communication channels to collaborate and work together. Um, and sometimes this becomes a little bit of a monster in and of itself. So let's take a look at uh, how this collaboration happens online. So uh, it's very common to have mailing lists. Uh, projects will typically have at least a mailing list for developers and other for users um, at, at the verb minimum. Uh, other open source projects also have a mailing list per interest group, per topic, per region, per language. Uh, there are also uh, a multitude of discussion forums, um, discourse, Slack, uh, discuss, also people uh, looking for topics on Stack Overflow and maybe others that I'm not even aware of. Um, events are another uh, avenue for communication. Uh, so there, there can be working group meetings, conferences, community meetups, and uh, other convenings that take place. Um, websites, sometimes there's more than one. <laughs> there's uh, usually a, a, a website for the project, a website for the conference, uh, there's documentation, there's wiki, um, and there's also uh, GitHub and other platforms as well. So uh, this is a lot to take in. And how do we make sense of all of this together? There are so many communication channels. Uh, how do we make sure that uh, all of these communication channels are aligned with project calls? Um, this is the, the question that I had in my mind when I started working uh, with the Apache Beam project. And uh, this, this is how I'm, I'm going to, to be diving into the method. So um, many times uh, open source projects dive into building multiple channels to collaborate. Um, and in, at the end of the day, engineers spend a lot of time uh, working to maintain those channels. Uh, and sometimes the, the result of that is not uh, what they expect or it's not necessarily aligned with project goals. So in order to understand how each of these channels uh, works towards that, I use the logic model. The logic model is uh, a very popular tool in the nonprofit sector, uh, which is the, the, um, the industry that I used to work in before I, I started working for Google. Um, and it is very frequently used to plan and manage uh, activities and programs. Uh, to understand how a, a certain investment is working towards uh, an expected goal. Um, so it helps to see uh, how activities and actions uh, work towards uh, short-term, mid-term, and long-term outcomes. Um, so let's look at the components. Um, we have at the, uh, at the very bottom the activities, and these produce an immediate result, which is the output. Uh, Short-term outcomes are changes in abilities and knowledge. Uh, Midterm outcomes are changes in behavior, practices, and policies. 
and long-term outcomes are changes in condition, culture, and or context. The logic model can be designed in two different ways that I'm aware of. Uh, this uh, design of the logic model is called a stairway logic model, and it's considered a, a stairway to success. So you are supposed to read it from the bottom to the very top. There is a different way of uh, creating a logic model, which is an action logic model, and it's written horizontally, and it's read from uh, left to right. So let's see how this is applied to communication planning. So this here is the, this is a, a, a lot to take in. I don't know if you can see all of this. Hopefully you can. Um, but this is how I apply this to uh, the channels uh, for Apache Beam uh, project. So for those of you who are not familiar with Apache Beam, uh, Apache Beam is uh, an open source project uh, for data streaming. Um, and so I, I was working with them uh, in the second half of last year. And uh, what I did uh, first was I, um, uh, I let me actually show you first how I changed this for communication. So instead of activities, I renamed that to channel. Uh, and then instead of outputs, um, I uh, call this artifact. So uh, this is what is generated with, uh, through the uh, any given channel. Uh, and then I left the other components the same. So you can see here are short-term outcomes, intermediate outcomes, and long-term goals. Um, so at the channel level, I listed all the channels that the project was using. Um, this was an interesting exercise because I was pre pretty familiarized with the project after a month of working with them, or two months. Um, and I, uh, I I mapped it out and I, I, I sent this to the mailing list and I said, hey, I'm doing this, this uh, study. Can you tell me if this is correct? Uh, am I missing any channels? And I actually was. I, I was missing uh, several that I, I hadn't even considered, um, which just goes to show how much effort goes into communicating about a project. So after I had a consensus with the project contributors about what were the channels, the, the other important element to them was to um, uh, clarify um, which channels were managed by a uh, the the PMC, uh, which is the the uh, product management committee, uh, and which ones were independently managed, uh, and that's a, a governance aspect of how uh, Apache organizes projects. Um, in any case, here are all the communication channels at the bottom, um, and so listed right above them are all the artifacts that are produced. Uh, with these channels. And after creating this, I, uh, I listed the short-term outcomes uh, that are connected to each of these artifacts. So for example, uh, writing about, uh, writing a blog on the Beam Summit website uh, helps towards promotion of Beam Summit, uh, which in turn, uh, uh, works towards increasing participation in beam events um, and so on and so forth. So all of these artifacts need to be connected to a short-term outcome, which has to be connected in turn to an intermediate out outcome and a long-term outcome. If it's not connected and you cannot find a connection to that, uh, and, and this is why this exercise is, is valuable, what that is showing you is that maybe there isn't really a reason to keep doing this effort. And so um, this, um, this exercise is very valuable uh, because it's allowed, it allows you to identify redundancies. For example, uh, when it comes to Beam, I realized that, uh, as you can see here, the project had two different blogging platforms. Um, one on the Beam website and, the, and one on the Beam Summit website. So do we really need to have a, two different blogging spaces for the project? Or can we talk about the Beam website 
uh, the Vim Summit web the Vim Summit on the Vim website blog and maybe drive more participation in that way. Uh, on the other hand, it, the exercise also allows you to um, to see where are the gaps. So if you look on the right side here of this diagram, you can see that workshops contribute to a very uh, important short-term outcome uh, for the project, which is uh, increased knowledge on how to contribute to BIM. Uh, so are we actually having enough of these uh, opportunities for training, enough of these workshops, or do we need to uh, do more of that? So um, in the process of, of designing this logic model, uh, one of the, uh, the aspects that took longer other than identifying all the channels was uh, coming to an agreement about what were the short-term outcomes and the intermediate outcomes that we were looking for uh, with the, with the, for this project, for Apache Beam. And so once we had consensus and we understood how each of these are connected, uh, we were able to, to finish this. So let me see. I think I'm going to move on to the next slide. And this is, I wanted to show you how after I created this logic framework, how I designed the strategy based on this, because this is how, um, in a way, it's like the, 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 the rundown of the things that need to change uh, to optimize this. Because if we leave it just at the graphic instance, um, then uh, all the conclusions are, uh, and the conclusions are not documented, then it's not really that useful. So um, this is how I applied this. I, I created the logic model, I shared it uh, with the community, and uh, I explain how each, I explain the same thing that I'm explaining to you now, how each channel has to be connected to an outcome and so on and so forth. Um, I identified the redundancies and I propose a And uh, these are, these strategies are to align the communication efforts with the, the project the project goals. And so in the case of Apache Beam, uh, the biggest efforts are set to uh, accelerate the conversion of Beam users to Beam contributors. Uh, and so to this end, I explained in the appendix. So these are the, the three strategies, uh, adding uh, blog post categories, frequency and distribution, develop more in-person and digital workshops and increased distribution of tech talks. And so in the appendix, I explain uh, the reasoning behind all of this. I, I knew based on uh, some uh, user experience research that the main entrance to the project was the Apache Beam uh, website. And so um, with this in mind, I, I proposed a concentrating the blog just on that website and uh, talking more about uh, the summit or other events there so that people were aware that this were happening in the first entry point to the project. Um, I, and so with that, we hope that we can accelerate, and that's what this green arrow means here, um, the step from being aware of a BIM meetup program to uh, knowing how to use BIM. And then uh, the other uh, change that I propose is developing more in-person digital workshops. And this is how I used it um, using the first diagram again. So I was proposing uh, driving a, this content that is a, where we show how to, how to use BIM and how to contribute to the website and put it more in front of the, uh, the new users that are accessing the project for the first time. And so making the documentation more, uh, more easily accessible and uh, putting um, uh, recorded talks of presentations and workshops uh, more available on the website as well. Um, and also creating more opportunities for training. 
Uh, I think, yes, uh, going over my notes so I make sure that I don't miss anything. The other important point about, I'm going to drink some water, sorry. <laughs> The other important point about how to communicate this uh, is uh, creating something that is easy to, to process uh, and can be used as reference. And so in this case, I created this double entry table where I explain if you have a new tech talk or if you have a training or a blog post, these are the channels where you should be talking about this. So this can be a quick reference for anybody who's uh, generating something new. And so as, as we all know, uh, open source projects are uh, created in collaboration with, uh, with everybody who wants to participate. And so um, people can be creating a tech talk or a presentation at any point to explain something. So why not include that in the, in the project uh, channels? So this is a very quick reference on, on how to do that. Um, I think... Yes, uh, that's the presentation. So this is basically how I presented the, the strategy. I have to say that in the beginning, I had uh, a much longer document uh, explaining uh, in more detail communication concepts and all of these things. And my, manner, my, my manager at the time, Griselda Kovas, was like, no, we need to present this to engineers. This has to be like straight to the point. And that's when I just boiled it down to do these three things and uh, this table. And I think that was, uh, that was very effective and it just, um, it, it created a, a very good conversation and understanding about why this has to happen. Um, so yes, the outcomes. So the, the logic model had, had a very good reception uh, as, a, as a tool, I think it just helps to uh, put everybody on the same page uh, and understand uh, why certain changes need to happen. It's a very instant understanding, um, especially when everybody is on board about uh, the, the outcomes that we want for the project. Um, if there was anything there that was uh, subject to discussion or disagreement, then there would have been more conversation about it, but it was just very clear and straightforward. And I think uh, the logic model really show, it helped to show um, why, why those changes need to happen. So we implemented this on Apache Beam's wiki. Uh, it's a Confluence wiki. Uh, so documentation on how to use the project communication channels. And um, the recommendations were used to redesign the Apache Beam website. So I think that's, let me see, yes, that's uh, all the information I had to share about this project. And uh, I wanted to thank you all for, for joining this session. And if you have any questions or any comments or feedback, uh, I would love to, to hear them. Thanks so much, Maria. Um, I do have one question. Um, is there a process for eliminating the communication channel or hiding it in the event it is duplicated um, effort or no longer needed? Is there a process? Yeah, do you have a process or do you just, how do you get rid of a communication channel based on the way you have this laid out? Well, yeah, that's a good question. The first thing is that you have to, to talk other people about it and have them agree that it's a good idea to eliminate it. Um, because if there's a communication channel, there's probably somebody who's managing it and, and who feels uh, that there's a, a need to, to have it there. Um, and so I, I think the, the first step would be to get everybody on board and why the changes need to happen. And then uh, the person who owns it usually can shut it down, yeah. But many times there isn't a process to open or close and people just take initiative to do those things by themselves. Um, and so sometimes this, this is also a good opportunity to write down those processes. If we're opening a new communication channel, this is how we do it. And this is how, this is, these are the people that need to sign off on this, et cetera, et cetera. 
Yeah. Um, I agree with Michael. This is a really nice um, stair step model. I, I really appreciate you sharing that. Um, we, we, I think I gleaned a lot from that presentation. Oh, so I appreciate you. that. And then I'm opening the chat now to see this. Yeah, we have another question. Will um, oh, yeah. this from Sajeep? Will this approach be rolled out to other Apache projects? Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, I don't know about that. I think um, it, that that would be interesting. I, but it really depends on each project and what the project governance, in this case, the PMC. Uh, decides to do. I was working at, here, I was working very closely with the PMC and checking in with them frequently, as well as communicating to the to the entire project community. Um, so I think it's key to to work with them. But if you want to take it as a model to an Apache project that you know could benefit from this, please do. Okay. Thank you. Are there any more questions? think so. Let me see. Mm -hmm. oh, there's a few comments. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a process for eliminating documentation? Okay. Oh, I have another question coming in. This one is first time I see the logic models and it being applied in an amazing way. A slightly off topic question. Your thoughts on applying logic model approach to plan personal life or career? Uh, so what was the, 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 the question part? The question was, um, what are your thoughts on applying the logic model approach to planning one's life or your career? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can do that. Yeah, logic models uh, are a flexible tool and you can do it, use it for whatever you want. I never tried applying it to my life because I, I like to be spontaneous. <laughs> but... <laughs> But I appreciate people who, who plan uh, carefully. Yeah, um, I, I think that's that can that can work out if that if that works for you. You should try and do it. Awesome. We have one coming in from Matt. Matt says the logic model looks useful for some things my team is working on. Any pointers on getting started trying to use the model for the first time? Any resources? Yes. Yes, great question. Thank you for asking that. So I actually learned about this when I was working for uh, the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, Wikimedia is the social movement that is behind Wikipedia. And I was working for the learning and evaluation team uh, who was um, spreading the word, evangelizing about uh, logic models and strategic planning uh, for Wikimedia programs and, and activities. And so I'm gonna share a link with you and you can, this is a, a great resource to start. This uh, this was created by my manager at the time, Jamie Amsty. And so you can see here action logic models and staircase logic models. These are all applied to Wikimedia activities, but I think that if the concept was clear to you, uh, you can definitely, um, here, I'm gonna type this as a response to your question. You can definitely um, read more there as well. Great. Thank you. Can you drop it in the chat as well for anyone else who, who may not yeah. see it in the Q&A? Let me see. All panelists and attendees, more on logic models. There we go. Awesome. Thank you for that. Um, yes. Wolfgang has another question. There is also a lot of confusion in our company between projects because every project has different communication channels. So it becomes more difficult to coordinate these, Slack, Discourse, Mattermost, Internet, and so forth. So it also really becomes difficult to know which channel to use when you want to reach people across multiple projects. Do you have any thoughts on this, Maria? Wow, yeah. Um, so I think it, it might be a good idea to um, create a policy uh, around uh, how, which communication channels you use and, and how you use them uh, and get the different projects to sign up on that. And then 
I, I, I was in a similar situation in my previous job because uh, at the Wikimedia Foundation, some people liked using IRC, um, which is a, a, an old uh, chat uh, system from when the Berlin Wall was still up. <laughs> And so it allowed people to communicate over the over the wall. But anyway, it's uh, some people use IRC and some other people like using Slack and other people use Google Hangouts. Um, and so from my experience there, I would say having a company wide policy uh, really would really help. And then you can decide we're create we're using this platform to communicate across. And then maybe you have some leads that can take messages back to their projects. So that's something that we do in, in my current job. There's a person who, for example, a colleague just launched the Go Developer Survey, and she was asking me, can we share this with Apache Beam community because Apache Beam runs on Go? And so I, I would be the connector for that. So like having people of contact for each project might be a good idea as well. Oh, I think you're muted, Regina. Next one's coming in from Haya. What's the time required to maintain an update? Oh, you mean communication channels, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, well, it depends. Uh, you can also decide this upfront to some extent. Um, so some projects have a policy of, for example, sending four tweets a day, which can be a lot or sending at least one tweet a day. And so um, if you do it as a community and as a, as a project, you can have a process where people submit tweets uh, and then they get approved and published. Uh, and so that lowers the burden on any one person who needs to, um, to create the social media, for example. Um, I would say really how much time depends on, on what your goals are. Um, usually, it's recommended that you tweet once a day at least, and then that you can have a blog at least every two weeks. We have a couple of questions from Michael. Even though we are starting to use Microsoft Teams, I have trouble thinking about how to structure channels. Project-based, product-based, team-based, topic-based, internal only, internal but cross-team, internal, external. Once I have that structure, it is difficult where to put a message. Your thoughts on that, Maria? Um, I think, uh, so I'm not, I'm not familiar with Microsoft Teams. I, I haven't had the chance to use it yet, but I believe it should be able to have group chats as well mm -hmm. as individual chats. And so, honestly, it, it, it depends. And, and it depends on like how you're used to working in collaboration with others. Mm -hmm. uh, we tend to have a, a team chat um, that is internal. And then we, we also create a group chats with external people. So that are not in our company, but our vendors who are providing a service. And we do that uh, on a case by case basis whenever there is an event, for example, and they are supporting the event, we use that chat room to communicate with them. Uh, and then the chat, th that chat room goes silent because the event is over. And so while sometimes you can, um, it can, feel overwhelming to have a lot of chat rooms. And this happened to me quite a bit. Now I'm, I'm more used to it. I also I, I also really emphasize the this concept of having a policy on how you communicate on those uh, chat rooms and, and when you tag people, um, because that can really help to, to communicate more efficiently when you want people to, to pay attention. Um, and so you know that on your team group, you would probably have X number of messages and every day everybody's sharing what they're working on and you would probably read about that. And then on, on chat rooms that are uh, created solely for specific events, uh, you know that it's happening only on that day. And so 
trying to have some some rules around it is probably helpful. And then with regards to making them external or non external, it, yeah, it depends on how you collaborate uh, with your team. Okay. Well, thank you for that. Um, Michael did um, elaborate a little bit more on the piece around um, this team, the challenges of collaborating when you have an external people. So his question is, I collaborate with my team on a project related to a product. Sometimes I have to you know, in, engage external people. So where do you recommend that that type of message would go? Where you, where you can talk to both the internal and the external folks about that particular project or product. So it sounds like maybe you can have, a, it sounds like you can have a chat room. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Agree, Michael. <laughs> You can have a chat room um, with your team about the project, right? And that's the segmentation. So you have team and then within your team, the project. And that's that's the room that you're going to create. And then you can have a second one where you also include external people. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that can help you to, to organize that. Yes. I, I don't know how big your, your team is, but... If your team is very big, then you you definitely should go with uh, with just having the team project uh, criteria for that chat group, uh, so that you don't spam everybody else who's not on that. Right. Um, and uh, and then having a second room where you can also talk with external people, I think that that would be the way to go. All right. Well, thank you for that. Yes. No problem. Uh, okay, let me see. Right. I'm ready. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Philippe and Joshua. I think the logic model is a great tool for internal comms and a great way to help quickly capture a communication strategy. It seems fabulous for building consensus around communication with community. Thank you so much for sharing this and teaching us. Oh, thank you so much, Joshua. Okay, this we responded to. Oh, and then the questions from Michael. Great. Yeah, I think you got them all. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So yeah, uh, thank you everybody. I don't know if there's, there are any more questions or comments. Oh, hi, Michael. <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> All right. Well, wait, I think there's something coming in. Hold on. Let's see here. No, I can't see you, Michael. No, I can't see you, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's nice to see a, a familiar name in the chat. That's what I meant. Yeah. Yeah, it is weird. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, if there's no, well, let me see. Yeah. Uh, making sure we don't miss anyone. Michael says, good job, Maria. 